We're Jazzy and JR, and this is The Road We're On. This week, we took a much-needed break from our van build and went up north to visit Idaho. We crammed in everything from biking the Hiawatha Trail to picking fresh apples and sightseeing our way through Lake Coeur d'Alene. We fell in love with Idaho one small study at a time, and we wanted to recommend these four must-do things for your next trip to Idaho. Stick around to keep up with our crazy adventures, because this is The Road We're On. Okay, so we're about to leave. I got called into work for four weeks. Last night we picked him up, and then today we're heading straight back out to Idaho. We have friends that live up by Lake Coeur d'Alene, and we're gonna show you guys the best things to do in Idaho. Let's go. access to the beautiful Bitterroot Mountains on the border of Northern Idaho and Montana. It's open May through September and use Lookout Ski Pass Company if you're going to run a bike. They're about 15 minutes east of the trailhead and they'll be set up there with the bikes for easy access and help to get you started. Where? Mile <laughs> 5 in Montana. Mile 5 in Montana. Right on the border. The trail is 15 miles long and has 10 tunnels with the longest tunnel reaching 1.7 miles one way. You guessed it, it's the first tunnel you're going to go through. Okay, this is cool. Come on, you're ready. Just saying hi. <laughs> the light at the end of the tunnel. Wow. The tunnels are cold, wet, and muddy, but when you come out, be prepared for a shock of nature. Along the way, you'll find 46 signs to help describe the history of both the railway construction and deconstruction. I genuinely cannot get over this smell, and I think it's just fresh air. <laughs> it just shows you how we're from California. LA area. Yeah. yeah. I think it's from the trees. I think it is. I feel like I've never smelled that in my life before. I think Jazzy's hungry. <laughs> <laughs> One of our favorite parts ended up being the tunnels. At first I was nervous, but once you make it through, it feels so worth it and the world looks like a huge coloring book. Our next favorite part was the trestles. If you're like me and don't know the difference between trestles and bridges, there's not much. By definition, the only difference is that a trestle is supported near each end by a pair of divergent legs. On the whole trail, you'll pass over seven trestles in total. And if you're scared of heights, I suggest not looking down, but looking out is absolutely breathtaking. We love the views for the whole ride, but especially during our lunch. I mean, it can't get much better than a homemade PB&J made with local peach jam on a bridge overlooking the mountains. So if there's anything you get from this video, it's make sure to pack yourself a lunch. We just finished the bike ride. A load of the bikes. The in bike the thing. And then we take a yellow school bus up. When was the last time you rode a school bus? With the purchase of your ticket, a complimentary ride up the mountain is included. You'll hop on the school bus for about 30 minutes, and this was one of our favorite parts because not only did our bus driver become our tour guide, but we even saw a moose. You'll end the day riding back through the first yet longest tunnel again to the bike drop-off and parking lot. Next up, visiting a local farmer's market. Finding a local farmer's market that's close by to your accommodation is the best early morning adventure we can recommend. We chose Liberty Lakes Farmer's Market on the border of Idaho and Washington because it was close by to where we were staying. Not to mention they had the best strawberries and raspberries I've ever tasted in my life. I've never seen white raspberries before. They had a ton of stuff while we were there, but apparently there's even more vendors when it's a sunny morning. Farm owners take their crop to the local farmer's markets to sell their produce, and their produce is so fresh that most people, so we're told, do their grocery shopping here instead of at their local supermarket. After tasting a few things, we can totally tell why. We also love to support small shopping, so this was a perfect way to start our day. Successful? Successful farmer's market. One of my favorite things we did was spending a day around Lake Coeur d'Alene. 
We started our day around Lake Coeur d'Alene at a classic local breakfast joint. The Garnet is known for their home cooked style meals and one of a kind lemon curd that pairs good with almost anything. I ordered their special banana Nutella stuffed French toast while Jazzy got Country Eggs Benedict. And let me tell you, this place did not disappoint. We even stole a few extra bites from our friend's cinnamon roll pancakes. Make sure you get here early or be prepared to wait a few minutes for a table. We definitely say it's worth the wait. Thank you. The Garnet Cafe, it is a must if you are in the Idaho, Spokane, Washington, Montana. Montana. Yeah. <laughs> It was voted number one breakfast place in Idaho. That was on the cover of People's Magazine. And I recommend the country hash and the uh, cinnamon roll pancakes <laughs> with lemon curd. <laughs> Downtown Lake Coeur d'Alene is filled with fun activities to do for everyone. If you like to do scavenger hunts, there are five moose statues based on a children's book, Mudgy and Millie, placed around town for kids or adults to find. But if instead you're looking to update your wardrobe, Downtown Lake Coeur d'Alene has plenty of clothing stores for you to both browse or buy. There's also some souvenir shops on the main street for you to pick up some small things for your loved ones back home who couldn't make the trip. Don't forget to check out the local candy store that's filled sky high with delicious treats. I could have stayed here all day if Jazzy would have let me. Right across the way from the downtown shops is the main resort. Not only is the lobby stunning, but the inside restaurant is known for their huge sundays. They call them gooeys. Mmm, gooeys. <laughs> After you share a don't cherry gooey, you can walk over and take a spa day while looking at this relaxing view. The weekend that we went happened to be the Wooden Boat Show. We got to walk around and see restored wooden boats in the beautiful Lake Coeur d'Alene. Some of these boats were actually close to 100 years old. Just a drive or a boat ride from the resort is the Lake Coeur d'Alene Golf Course. This isn't just any golf course, as the 14th hole is referred to as the floating green. Yes, you heard that right, floating. If you're skilled enough to make the ball on the green, you get a short boat ride to the floating island to put your ball into the hole. Literally floating out in the middle of the lake. I would lose my ball for sure. <laughs> just a beautiful, beautiful spot. And today the weather is not the greatest, but it's still just gorgeous. It's still gorgeous though. I mean, it's cold and rainy, but we came all the way out here. Yeah. The views from the golf course are worth the visit alone, but seeing a floating hole made me want to bring my clubs with me the next time we come to visit. We finished our day with dinner at the famous Wolf Lodge. Because Idaho is known for their potatoes, of course we had to order a loaded baked potato. And let me say it was the best potato I've ever had. A great place to end our day at Lake Coeur d'Alene. Our last recommendation for your time in Idaho is to visit the local farms. Visiting the local farms in Green Bluff felt like all of my California fall dreams finally coming true. We went in September, so we were able to experience the beginning of the Harvest Festival, and we were even able to see some of the farm animals. There were about 40 different farms in this particular area, which is near the border of Washington and Idaho. Each one of them you can stop at to visit. We chose to pass some of the bigger farms in order to stop at the smaller ones and spread out the love. I suggest driving to a few different farms and getting out at the ones that you love the most. Throughout the different seasons, the farm produced different crops that you are able to go and see for yourself. If you're going to go in the fall season, we saw everything from apples to pumpkins and pears to sunflowers. We even got to pick and taste our own. Just don't forget to pay for those ones at the end. <laughs> wow. <laughs> What's this one? Macintosh, right? <laughs> Do you like Macintosh or Honeycrisp? <laughs> They both have like differences, but <laughs> honey crisp is a little juicier, but then this has like a little bit sweeter. Yeah. At a few of the farms, you're even able to press your own apple cider. But by far, our favorite thing about this entire day was the to die for pumpkin donuts that we still dream about. It's poisoned out here. <laughs> Fresh lime pumpkin donuts. Yeah. Oh my god. That is insane. The best so pumpkin donut, maybe the best donut. Made it so good. You could really taste it. After an amazing time in Idaho, with a little bit of puppy love, it was our turn to leave. I'm sad. That was uh, way too quick. It was a fun trip, though. And we want to say a special thanks to Allison and Scott for hosting us. The best hosts ever. 
We hope if you come to Idaho, you try some of these things because they were our favorite. They were also highly recommended by them. With the local farmer's market, you get a little bit of the local vibe. And with the Hiawatha Trail, you still get some exercise. Yeah. <laughs> we came in September, so this is their fall time. But I loved it because you got to see the trees changing color from green to red and yellow. And in California, we don't really get that. No. Everything we did was doable in this time of year. I think it also would be really doable in the summer or the spring. Um, you might have some problems in the winter. So keep that in mind if you're planning on going to Idaho. Yes. But other than that, we hope you enjoyed this video and maybe we'll be back here in summer. Yeah, in the spring, we want to go white water rafting. We're going to try to enjoy these last minute views. If you found any of this interesting, don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Yes. <laughs>